It's amazing. This should be mandatory in every single car, especially what we're in, working in, for. <laughs> uh, in, especially in polluted cities, because um, you spend a lot of time in your car. Normally, you are in an environment yeah. which has other cars around, yeah. uh, other other uh, pollutants around. Uh, well, I would like well, to see that in my car very soon. Hi, Lucas. Hi, Daniel. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. And you? Congratulations. Very well. Congratulations to the win. Thank you very much. Fantastic <laughs> race. Yes. It was a good, good race. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 I'm so happy for me and yeah. for the team as well. Yeah. We really deserve it. Yeah. As you know, I'm Daniel Hagstrom. I'm the CEO and founder of Cabin Air. We work with uh, ensuring healthy air, healthy and clean air in vehicles uh, throughout the world. According to studies of VHO, 9 out of 10 people in the world breathe bad air every day. Uh, it doesn't matter where in the world you are. If you live in a congested city, you're going to breathe bad air. And one part of the problem, it's not the whole problem, but one part is the combustion uh, engine cars. Uh, but we have that. Yeah. It's not something that is going to go away no, no. in the next 10, 20 years, especially where the air pollution is worse, like Sao Paulo, like Delhi, like other cities. So. But very, very few people, to none, talk about the most important fact, which is air quality. Everybody has to breathe. I got in touch with the UN, I, we talked about it, and we thought it was a great idea to use the UN platform to communicate that. So I became a, a UN clean air ambassador yeah. uh, to talk about that. I went to Delhi um, for us to check one of the most dense packed uh, the dense populated city yeah. in the world, uh, but also one of the most air polluted cities in the world and see how this impact the lives of uh, millions of people. Because one thing that um, is poorly communicated is that people don't really understand that breathing continuously bad air damages their health. So we went there, uh, we did this documentary for a few days, uh, we visit some people, we visit a, a pediatric hospital yeah. and I was deeply shocked by the results like in Delhi if a kid is born today something between 8 to 9 kids per 10 so 80 to 90 percent they will have some form of chronic respiratory disease when they are in uh, adulthood. The amount of money we spend in the world to focus on the pandemic it's right we should do it but we should also focus on the even bigger problem, and that is help pollution. Our whole idea is we can help now. Uh, of course, the transition to a greener energy system is the solution for the long term, but it's going to take 30, 40, 50 years to especially get there in, in the poor world. countries yes, as well. Yes, especially in poor countries. So Daniel, explain to me how the future actually works. So uh, I, from what I can see, you have like a, a mechanical future, like the, yeah. uh, a future here, and then you have this electric, kind of electric, a lot of spikes. Like yeah. it's, it's so, so what we do? Wh why is that? What we do? This is this the same size of a, of an ordinary filter. So we want to fit into the vehicle as it is. Two like existing a standard, vehicles, standard size yeah. of filter. But the filter we have is more optimized because what we do is that we charging the air that comes into the to the to the vehicle by adding a high voltage to. Uh, so this part so which this, says high this, caution, yeah. high voltage. So. It's really high voltage, yeah. but low current, so it's not yeah. dangerous for yeah. you. It's not going to be dangerous. But what we do is that when we're charging the particles in the air, they get stickier. They're going to stick Not dangerous for to, me, but dangerous to the virus and bacteria. Exactly, dangerous to that. <laughs> we're going to catch it. So, so but, but we, we are... We have to change it. So so, we're, going to say, we're going to say caution <laughs> virus, high voltage. Yeah. <laughs> so what the spikes does, we're creating what's called the corona. A corona discharge. Um, and the smaller the particles are, the, the more effect you will get from this. The same way as you can see it as when you take a balloon to your hair. Yes. And it, it's, you get that charge and it sticks to the wall. But I guess so also helps the maintenance of the future, right? Because the, all the, there is the, the bacteria that sticks 
if a bacteria or a big particle, yep. organic particle gets stuck in the mechanical part, this electric charged also the electrical shell is going to stop it's growth. Gonna, it's, exactly. So it's, it's going to stop growth. It's going to make it much more difficult to grow or kill yeah, that, exactly. that, that we, bacteria. We, we, we always talk about uh, capturing and killing or deactivation, as, as it's called when we talk about bacteria. So right, that we deactivate them. And does, does it consume, I guess it doesn't not consume a lot of energy. It's, it's a high voltage, but very low current. Yeah. I can see by the it, size of the cables yeah, here. Yeah, it, it is really low current um, compared yeah, so, to the fan in your car. Yeah, it's nothing compared to Even compared so, to the so, radio. <laughs> yeah, so here it's like you can run it all the time in the vehicle. And that's the whole idea. We can, by small measures, increase the performance 10 times. Compared 10 times. To a normal filter. The, when it comes to the ultra fine small particles. It's amazing. It's, but also it's interesting, which I didn't know, and I would like to for you to tell me a little bit about it, the CO2 problem. Yeah. CO2 is from one perspective not the pollutant. Uh, it it's of course the, the bigger picture it's it's greenhouse gas and yeah. it, it it's something that we produce like that. But when you are in a confined space, when you are in a closed environment. CO2 becomes a pollutant. Oh, really? So for example, the balance of CO2 and oxygen yeah. in the air. If we burn the oxygen, we're gonna make CO2. So if you are in a confined space and the CO2 levels go up, yeah. it means that you have too little oxygen in there. Correct. And you're gonna get tired, you're gonna get slower reaction times, which is super important in a vehicle to see to that you are always alert. Um, ah, so, it's so, very interesting that. <clears throat> because, so CO2 becomes a safety issue. Yes, because if you have too much CO2 inside, yeah. I, I experienced that, well, you, you can experience that actually when you go to very high altitudes and you don't have enough oxygen yeah. there that yeah. you, you experience some form of dizziness, yeah. you're tired, your reaction times. I never thought about that before. And actually the doctor um, in some of the races yeah especially when we race in uh, Mexico City, which is 2,300 meters high, uh, high um, we use supplementary oxygen. Yeah. Um, but that's very interesting because I guess, then correct me if I'm wrong, car industry, one way of keeping the air with, let's say when the air outside is very polluted, they circulate the same air inside the vehicle. Exactly. If you recirculate, you're gonna breathe the air from the other people in the vehicle. You're gonna turn around there Yes. Uh, in that sense. And, and by that, you are increasing the risk of spreading a virus. Uh, so the whole, whole idea with our product is that by enhancing the filtration of the air that comes into the vehicle, yep. so that we can increase the performance up to 10 times, we are filtering away 99% of all particular matters in the air. By doing that, we can run the vehicle with more fresh air into the vehicle. And by that, we make it cleaner for you, we make it healthier for you because you can breathe yeah. uh, fresh air from outside all the time. You get you get uh, better reactions, you're not getting tired, and by that we improve the safety of being in the vehicle. That's very, very interesting. Um, and and uh, that has been a okay because it, it, it will make, will help to save people's lives. And still amazes me that this is not communicated and not uh, uh, people don't know about this problem. And as soon as they know, they will ask. So this is why we work with making what we call the invisible visible. And this is why we have developed the sensor to be able to measure. So what we measure, we measure particles in the air yeah. and especially the really tiny particles. We measure CO2, which is super important for reaction times in vehicles and, and for this risk of spreading a virus and bacteria. And we measure organic compounds which is often quite dominant in, in the vehicle environment because you have materials, uh, seats, plastics, and so People. on like that. People uh, like that. If we have these three measurements, yeah. we can guide you to, to healthier air. We can guide you what to do. Should you turn on recirculation? Like everything, Should if you, you have off? the right data, yeah. you can actually change something and actually compare and actually also tell the people, show the people what's actually going on. Do they have too much CO2? Do they have too much VOCs, too, too much PM 2.5? And then when they activate the filter or the filter out, activate automatically, then you can see the, the improvement. You can actually measure exactly. the, the improvement of the air. Do we call it a connected health zone system. What we want to do is we want to clean the air, we want to measure the air, and we want to guide you to healthier 
cleaner air. That, that's very cool. That's very, very cool. That's something I, I didn't know that the uh, cabin air had and, a sensor and, as well. And, and I believe that, that the knowledge is going to be the key to the, to the solution of the problem, that we make people aware of the problem. Yes. If you're aware, you can take measures. Yeah. What, about ma what about maintenance? What about, is it like, if, if I use this uh, filter in a, and I know that, uh, let's say, that uh, it's a very, very polluted air, do you have to change it more frequently? Actually, the, or that is because my, my water it, it, filter. It is designed for the same kind of service life yeah. as, as a standard type of filter. The ultra fine particles they are so tiny compared to the big dust yeah. and other things, and it's actually the dust particles, the big things that clogs up the filter ah, yeah, that, of that sets the lifetime of the filter. But the ultra fine particles they are so small, so they will actually not change that much. Understood. Capture 99% of them, much more than a filter, but it will not change the lifetime. So Daniel, I was, I was just uh, playing with it uh, just earlier on with this, <laughs> and I can see that actually it's, it's de detachable, yeah. right? So actually, actually, what you do... So these are the electronic components to get, this is, this is the inverter to get like yeah, high voltage, that is right? designed for lifetime of the vehicle. Yeah. So, so what you do is actually, you unclip these ones and then you detach it from the filter, yeah. And by doing that, you can change the filter, keep the electronics. Ah, yeah, so, sure. So, so it's a one-time installation. So the of filter, the if it gets clogged, or you, after the lifetime of the filter, you change just the filter just and you keep the, filter. the electronics. And by that, so you, then is you this... get out all the dirty stuff and the bacteria and viruses. And, and this has basically the lifetime of a vehicle. Yes, the it's electronics designed, is designed, designed for the for lifetime of it, the vehicle. It's designed for that. It's so. amazing. This should be mandatory in every single car, especially what in, we're working in, for. <laughs> in, especially in polluted cities, because. Um, you spend a lot of time in your car. Normally, you are in an environment yeah. which has other cars around, yeah. uh, other other uh, pollutants around. Uh, well, I would like to see that the... in my car very soon.